switch this. There we go. Okay, so Impressionist Artists. You had just seen two videos about Impressionist Artists and we looked at some of the different artwork. I'm going to show you two different techniques. The chalk is actually my favorite. And when I see you again, we will definitely be doing some artwork like this. But Impressionist Art was about having a feeling of what the artist was picturing, not necessarily having it be completely realistic. So because of that, here's our chalk that we're going to work on, I'm giving you three different subjects we're going to create. A flower garden. We have our beach or water or ocean and our forest or our landscape. Now, most of these could work for more than one. It doesn't just have to be what you intended for it. And I'm gonna tell you, once you start making these, you are going to make lots and lots of them. I'm gonna do two different videos, one for each technique, so it's not all confusing and it's not all together. So we're gonna start with the chalk. Now, you do not have to have artist chalk. You can do this with outside chalk that you would use to draw on the sidewalk. Now, sidewalk chalk is not gonna give you as bright a color as the artist chalk is. Um, if you really enjoy this and you wanted to, Walmart, Target, Michael's craft stores, even the dollar store sometimes, you can find the artist chalk. So what we're gonna do with it is we are actually going to scrape it into my pan with water. So I have not quite half of it filled with water. We just need enough. You can kind of see it ripple a little bit. We need enough that the chalk will sit on top because it's really, really teeny tiny pieces. Now here's the key. Let me think, I'm going to start, I'm gonna start with the beach or the waterscape or your seascape that we're going to do. So I'm gonna use more of my blues. Now with my scissors, when I scrape them, I don't wanna tip them that way, like I'm cutting into it. That's gonna make really, really big chunks and it's going to get caught. Same thing, I don't wanna do it this way back towards me. I'm just gonna slide it straight up and down or a little bit forward, right over the top. And you can see with a white paper underneath how that makes teeny, teeny, tiny pieces of chalk dust. And because they are so tiny, it sits right on the surface and it coats it. Now I'm not digging into it. You can see where it starts to get thinner in the center. We need to be careful about that. Now, as we're making these, there are two different steps to this. The first part, we're gonna look at how we're going to make the background. The background is going to be the base of our colors For our impressionist art. After the base that has all of our colors is a little bit drier than when we first make it, since there's water involved with both of them, we are gonna go over how to turn it into more of the artwork we want it to be. Let me think if I'm doing water and some green. Sometimes water is not quite just watercolor, is it? We have different colors that get mixed in. One of the things that we saw with Impressionist artwork is they didn't always use the colors they wanted to show up. They mixed together little bits of different colors that made the colors they wanted to show up stand out more. And because you had an impression of what they were creating, 
it didn't always have to be the realistic colors you were thinking of. We can mix them all up together and it will still work. So just because we're thinking water doesn't mean we're just gonna stick to our watercolors. Never know what you might have hiding in the water, right? So I'm gonna do those. Put my apron on, wipe my chalk hands off. So here's how you're going to print it. We've done all those little shavings on top. I worked very fast. I've been doing it a long time. Take your time. This is one you're going to want to experiment with. Now doing colors over the whole pan is a great idea. The more colors you add, the thicker it's going to be, which means you're going to have more of your paper filled with colors. Now, as we go ahead and print it, I'm going to do this two different ways because I do want you to definitely be able to see how I do this. So I'm going to set this up like this. You can still see my pan where it's going, but you can see how I'm holding the paper now. So my paper clearly fits into the pan. I've cut it so I have plenty of room. I'm going to hold my two short sides the way it fits in. I'm going to curve them up. So it's going to look like a U or a smiley face. The reason is if I drop it down flat, all those little air bubbles, it's not going to have color. We want color on the whole paper. So holding the U shape, we're gonna put that in the water first and then drop it. And that will help make sure color is all over our paper. So this is where it's going to go. My U, I'm going to touch the water. Put it down and you can see even if i happen to push it all the way down in that's fine i'm going to take the two ends pull it straight out and put it over on my table to dry actually i'm going to move these because i don't need these right this second and i want to move it over here so you can see when i pull it out I need to pull it out and just set it down and leave it alone and let it dry. You can see all of those colors in there. That could be my forest. It could be my garden or my landscape. It could be the water. Lots and lots of different options. Some of the water lilies that we looked at with Monet have that same look and feel to it. So our next one. We don't even need to worry about it because some of the color that's in there, we'll use them again. So have fun as you make these. I'm going to be honest, it's addictive. You're going to want to make lots and lots of them. It's fun to see how the different colors work together. Be careful to hold it so you're getting just the edge because remember, if we kind of cut away in the middle, or if I hold it at the very end, it will break when the chalk is wet. This does not work. So with bigger pieces, I'm not holding them at the end. I'm holding it closer to the top. And because I'm just scraping on the very top of it, I'm not worried about getting my finger. I'm just being very, very careful and very, very intentional about how I'm doing this. And again, I'm working much, much faster than you will because I've done this a lot. So as you're getting the hang of it, it's going to take you a while and that is perfectly okay. I want you to take your time. And think about the colors or even don't. It's really amazing how they will all work together. So even here, I'm gonna do another one. Two ends, make my U shape. I'm gonna come down close, touch, drop, and pull it out. Now when you first pull it out of the water, you're going to notice that it looks like some of the colors run in straight 
it's okay. That's where that extra color in the water is. As it dries, that's not going to stay there. So you want to lay them flat, maybe about five minutes. Then you can hang them up to dry. So I have my little clothesline that I hooked up with my artwork there. Some of the different examples that I have done. So have fun with your chalk impressionist art. Remember, this is just the first step. We're gonna go through drawing in some of our details afterwards. But I wanna go over with the markers next. I'm gonna do another video for that. So hold on just a minute. If you don't wanna do the chalk, I got another one coming. All right, switch this out. We'll go ahead and do the markers and I'll see you guys in just a minute. 